It did not take very long for Sour Mono to get the call of a lifetime. Less than two weeks after making an opening day start at the AAA level here in Louisville, Romano made his first ever start in the majors today. Just say it could have gone better. Before the game, the 23-year-old greeted by the home fans before taking the hill against Milwaukee. Ryan Braun greeted him too in his own way. Third That's inning, goodbye baseball. That two-run blast made it 2 nothing, but Romano was not out of the woods yet. Next batter, Travis Shaw. Uh-oh, that two is gone, way gone. Up there in the stands, at least that fan there burned some calories getting that ball. Romano only three innings, walked four batters, three hits, and two earned runs. Not his best. Reds did show fight in this one with one on A. Eugenio Suarez, his third homer of the year. That made it 3-2 in the fourth. But Eric Thames and the Brewers had all the answers. In the seventh, another homer against oh, another former bat, Tim Adelman. He's got recalled from Louisville. Thanks for coming. Reds fall 4-2. They dropped three of four to the Brewers. Here's the rookie Romano on what went wrong. Um, I got the first one under my belt. Uh, it was a dream come true today. You know, no matter the results, obviously, I wish I could have done a little bit better and you know gave the team a couple more innings than what I did. But uh, like I said, I you know achieved the dream today, and you know that's most important. But I got to be able to do a little better than that. You know, it, it didn't resemble the Sal that we know. Sal, that that isn't a great representation of, of Sal Romano. You know, he'll, he's going to be much better than that. You know, he's got good downward angle on on his pitches. He pitches down in the zone early. He throws his breaking ball for strikes, and, and he can throw that high fastball late with two strikes. But, you know, that wasn't, that, that certainly wasn't the best of Sal. Mm -mm, certainly not his best. Meanwhile, in the minors, the bats, well, they've been playing at their best over the last three days. Today, they look for the four-game sweep on the defending IOS champion Columbus. But it was not meant to be. The Clippers jumped out first in the Here's bottom of the first. Chris Colabello going straight away, one run in, and just like that, the bats playing catch up, and they never caught up. It's Eric Gonzalez in the third, and drive to center. That, my friends, is gone. And that is a bats loss. No sweep for Louisville. The bats fall by the final of 8 0. On a college baseball, UK pitcher Justin Lewis was not feeling well before his start today against Missouri. By the end of the start, the right-hander was feeling much better. The Tigers, however, were not. Lewis, under the weather, spent most of pregame in the trainer's room, but he gave it a go and <laughs> did pretty darn good. Went five yesterday. innings, struck out four, three hits, only gave up one run, which is a lot better than Missouri did. Already 2-1 in the sixth. Luke Becker to short. Not only scores a run here, but Becker beats out the throw. It's 3-1 UK. Cats were not done. Later in the inning with the bases loaded, Marcus Carson going up the middle. Two more runs going to score. 6-1 the final. Kentucky takes two of three on the road against Missouri. The Wildcats will host Louisville on Tuesday. Switch now to soccer. There's only one unbeaten team left in the USL Eastern Conference. And it is Louisville City. The boys in purple sitting now in first place after taking down previously perfect Tampa Bay last night by the final of 2-1. It was the first major test of the season, and it's safe to say Louisville passed with flying colors. George Davis, the fourth, and Cameron Lancaster each scored for Louisville. The team now 3-0-1 on the young year, and James O'Connor, the head coach, says they are just getting started. I think for us, I'm just incredibly proud because I felt that you know, there was a lot of hype around Tampa, which, don't get me wrong, you know, they're a great team, they've got a great coach. But I felt at times that there wasn't necessarily enough credit given to our guys, and I, I'm delighted that our guys have been able to show how good they are um, and go and win the game because we've got a really good team here. They sure do. Louisville back to it this Saturday against Cincinnati. Well, straight ahead, we'll look back at the action from last night at Freedom Hall and hear from the game's MVP, future Wildcat Shea Gilgis Alexander. Is it next year yet? That's what a lot of Kentucky fans are asking tonight after last night's Kentucky Derby Festival Basketball Classic. A lot of great future stars on the court, but one definitely stood out, and that was Shea Gilgis Alexander. The future Wildcat did a little bit of everything, earning MVP honors in his team's victory. Scored a game-high 29 points, had nine boards and six assists. If that were not enough, he also won the three-point shootout. All of this while getting booed by a very pro Louisville crowd at Freedom Hall. Safe to say, the man can handle the pressure. I know what I'm capable of, and I, I know what I can do, and how much work I put into the game, and I just had to show the fans. Um, playmaking, 
uh, I can facilitate scoring. I need to rebound. I'm, 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 t I'm a tall guard. I got, I got a long wingspan. I can do a little bit of everything. Oh, yeah, he can. Now, there is one loose end for Kentucky fans after last night. Four-star guard Mark Smith still undecided about his collegiate future. The Wildcats are in the running. He told us last week he's planning on a visit to Lexington soon, as well as a trip to Ohio State. And more from last night's Derby Classic. Louisville fans also got a taste of the future with point guard Darius Perry. 22 points in defeat. Came up short also in the dunk contest as did this guy, Justin Smith, the future Indiana star. He did have a nice one in the second round of that contest. Also had a couple of good ones in the game as well. Ended up with 15 points. Archie Miller is going to need some of that offense next season. And Smith says he'll be happy to give it to him. I've been working for, at this for a long, long time, and just to have it finally pay off and have it actually be put into motion, it, it'll be very uh, fulfilling. I mean, of course, you think going in, you have an idea of what, what's going to happen, but then, again, you never know because you haven't, you haven't experienced it yet. So, I mean, we'll see. Looking forward to the start of his career. On to football. Louisville Cardinals enjoying some rest on this Easter Sunday after wrapping up spring ball yesterday with their spring game. Reigning Heisman Trophy winner Lamar Jackson looked very comfortable in the pocket. At the end of last season, he's been working on that, becoming a better passer, and it showed. 19 of 32 for 346 yards. Also had three passing touchdowns. And Coach Bobby Petrino said in the last couple months, he's become a lot better at figuring out coverages under pressure. What we tried to really focus and concentrate on is really understanding the coverages, seeing the safeties and seeing them pre-snap and post-snap understanding whether the linebackers were working downhill, which tells you it's man coverage like that. It's, it's a lot uh, harder to throw the ball against zone because you have to read and go one, two, three. Uh, most of the time when it's man coverage and you can recognize it, you know, your, your number one receiver just needs to win. Coach always talking about putting him, him into the ball, and that's what I got to focus on, you know, accuracy. That's the main key, you know, with our receivers. Oh, you got to be accurate. Hey, uh, speaking of accuracy, did you see this? The RBC today. Heritage, Peter Malnati on the par 3, 17th. Was not having the best of days, but, well, Luke, look at this. <laughs> this is going to make him feel better. That, my friends, is a hole-in-one. Beautiful. Ended up finishing the event tied for 44th, but he'll take that. The tournament eventually won by Wesley Bryan. Tom Lane back with you here tomorrow night. We'll hear from Louisville City and... Now, former UofL running back Brandon Radcliffe, who is planning for the NFL draft. Until then, have a great night. I'm Michael Sett.